you can tell when your car battery's dying. But with your water heater, you'll never know until it starts leaking. Before you buy another tank, consider a Navian tankless water heater. No storage tank to heat or leak. Lower energy bills and endless hot water for spa-like comfort. All backed by Navian's strong warranty. If your water heater is over 8 years old, it's time to check out Navian at tanklessmadesimple.com. Count on So I just left the house to go pick up my kids. And 10 minutes later, I got an emotional alert from Ring. My alarm was going off. I opened up my app, and there's this guy running out the front door. I didn't know who he was. Before I could do anything, I got a call from Ring. This is Jordan with Ring Alarm Monitoring. I'll send the police right over. My name's Nadine, and Ring helped save my house from a break-in. Protect your home today with Ring Alarm. Go to ring.com forward slash safety. That's ring.com forward slash safety. Hey, all it's Miles. Thank you guys for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Have you heard our newest podcast? It's called The Greatest Story Never Told. Download it today on radio.com. Be sure to subscribe. New episodes are uploaded every Tuesday at noon. Unfortunately, what you're about to hear is real. The members of this radio program are simply not that bright. Or what some people would call educated. They are merely stupid. They're not trying to offend anyone on purpose. And all have played doctors on TV. You have been warned and are cordially invited to join the party. This is the men's room. Get it, man, and get with the countdown. Get, 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 get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off the kicks, Bill. The trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy. And flying high as a kite. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. You know what they say shake your radio more than three times, and you're playing with it. You're listening to the men's room. Wow! Yes. <laughs> and away we go. Welcome to season 15, episode number 3331. <laughs> Along with Steve the Throw Hill. The Ted Smith! Woo! And Mike Hawk! Montgomery! And you are in the men's room! On tap today, it is a positive Friday, bitches. The exciting return of Ted versus the FCC. We will play Profile This. Plus headlines, a mention shot of the day, fun with listener emails, and everyone's favorite TV time with Ted. The clock. You're going to draw. All right, here we go. Ohio woman attacks several McDonald's workers after not getting a cookie in her meal. Pennsylvania man at grocery store was asked to wear a mask and attacks a manager with a frozen pizza for real. Three teams arrested after stealing a duck, then taking it to a house party for fun. Florida man impersonating a cop is arrested by a real officer with a real gun and a 62-year-old python who has not been near a male in 20 years gives birth. That is all coming on today's very special episode of The Men's Room. And now... Here's the question. Hola, bitches. Good day to you and yours. All right, you're probably familiar with Archie McVee, a purveyor uh, purveyor of funny gifts, toys, and novelties. It's the place to go if you need a rubber chicken, pickle-flavored candy, a banana slug mask, Bigfoot air fresheners, or more recently, the inflatable tardigrade ornament. What's a tardigrade? Now, you've probably seen a picture of one. They're microscopic critters. They kind of look like an eight-legged maggot, but a little closer to a monster. Anyway, Archie McVee, they're offering tardigrade ornaments, and you can order one for yourself through Shopify, but not through PayPal. And that's because PayPal's algorithm sees tard and flags it. And that's not much different than the business professor at USC. He was suspended for teaching, well, a business class. He was covering different filler words like um and uh, and he explained that in Chinese business. A very prevalent filler word is niga. Well, faculty determined that the Chinese filler word was too close to the N-bomb, and he was suspended. On the other hand, the Charlotte Hornets radio play-by-play announcer, he was suspended for testi- texting the actual N-bomb during a Utah Jazz-Denver Nuggets game. But instead of Nuggets... Yeah, you probably figured it out. And he's apologized. He said he never uses that word. But then he also said that Nuggets morphing into the N-bomb was not autocorrect. Maybe he shouldn't have admitted that last part. But we also do have a list of some very epic autocorrect fails from random people around this country of ours. The point we're getting at here is words. 
Words are what truly separates us from the animals, but words, well, sometimes they fail us. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Our question, intentional or not, who said the wrong thing at the wrong time? Be part of the big show called 206-421-ROCK. Like the Men's Room on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Men's Room Live. Text 77999 and send those emails to the men's room at KISW.com. If your tank water heater is over eight years old, you may be sitting on a ticking time bomb. It could start leaking without warning, causing far more damage than the loss of the heater itself. Consider replacing it with a Navian tankless water heater. No storage tank to leak, endless hot water for spa-like comfort, longer life, and backed by Navian strong warranty. Before time runs out, visit tanklessmadesimple.com for the name of your Navian contractor. Count on Navian. So we were both at work. We started getting these notifications from Ring. I'm just like, huh. I check my camera, and there are these two guys trying to break into my house. I hit the siren on my alarm, and I immediately get this call from Ring. Would you like for us to go ahead and send the police? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. We just wanted to secure our home. My name is Ina. And I'm Rohit. And with Ring Alarm, I stopped the break-in on my phone. Protect your home today with Ring Alarm. Go to ring.com forward slash away. Professional monitoring requires a Ring Protect subscription. Back to the conversation. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. Over to us and away we go. Positive Friday, season 15, episode number 3331. My oh my. <laughs> what a large and in charge program we have for you today. Guaranteed future repeat. It's Positive Friday, the exciting return coming up of uh, Ted versus the FCC. We will drink and toast with a shot of the day. We'll try to get there with our voices to uh, tell you what it'll feel a little scratchy out there from all the smoke. And not from our cigarettes this time. Exactly. For the first time ever. Man, oh man, downtown is uh, absolutely nuts. By the way, uh, you know everything about the wildfires, but if you'd like to help, the firefighters are out there doing an amazing job protecting our communities right now. Uh, they are facing some serious adverse conditions. If you would like to help and uh, donate in any way, shape, or form, head to KISW.com. We've got a link to the Red Cross there. And there's also like an interactive map of where the wildfires are currently. So that's because for the, my vision, you would say yeah, everywhere. Right. The uh, Northwest Interagency Coordination Center does that. So they put that together for both Washington and Oregon. So if you want to take a look at that as well, uh, just know, I believe the smoke is supposed to get worse throughout the weekend. Oh, and good. And by Monday, we might get some rain and it might blow out of here. But there's kind of uh, certain things are closing. I want to say parks are closing over the weekend, you said, Ted? Uh, in Seattle City, yeah. Yeah. So there's uh, there's all kinds of effects from this going on. And if we get any more I cancel my kids' soccer. Did they really? Yeah, earlier in the week. Uh, they did this like two. Th- ah, he didn't feel like going but anyway really they, uh well because they, they're not playing games right now because oh, of the covid okay. thing so right sure. now it's like getting players to training camp and say oh we're not doing the season but you can have training camp for four months so it's hard to motivate them to not play a game but to go out and practice mm-hmm. right? yeah remember yeah, it was canceled people. because of the smoke the same remember when everybody was like i'm happy 2019's over Mm-hmm. Then this happened. Mm-hmm. This has been one after another, and it? it's just been the hell with this year. It's been nonstop, man. I mean, we didn't get a summer, first of all, right. and then, you know, then we get this and everything else. And yeah. look, it's a lot worse in a lot other places. Keep that in mind, without because a doubt. What's going on in Oregon right now is horrific. What's going on in, uh, in California, Northern California, is is absolutely just devastating. So, uh, and, and we are no exception to that. Just not necessarily on the same type of level. But there's tons of fires out there. I know for a fact that out by Chelan and Brewster, they got hit pretty hard and everything else. So, if you'd like to donate, head to KISW.com, and there is a link there for the local Red Cross. All right, we're going to try to keep this one positive today. Well, you're off to a great start. Yeah, well, positive Friday, <laughs> the exciting return of Ted versus the yeah. FCC. We just had to get that taken care of. Yeah, yeah, just a little yeah. bit of business there about what, uh, what's going on. <laughs> right. It's right out the window. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's hard to acknowledge. We can't see anything. Yeah, it is, it is crazy down here. Our right. masks smell like smoke. Right, and, and not sm- cigarette smoke. And we smoke. It's like, you know what I mean? It's like we're walking around like with a barbecue going on. And you're going to go get barbecue tomorrow. I'm supposed to, but I don't know if I'm going to sit outside. Outside, eat barbecue. All they got to do is put the meat outside. They don't right. have to get anything. That's it. It'll be smoky <laughs> enough, yeah. Uh, today in our question, intentional or not, who said the wrong thing at the wrong time? We've all put our foot in our mouths. Kids do it all the time in inappropriate situations. Uh, but kids, it's different. You can only put your foot in your mouth if you recognize that you have done. Mm-hmm. Sure. Kids don't seem to recognize that they have... Kids will embarrass the adults around them, but right. it's no skin off their back. No, not because they don't realize what they've said. And sometimes is adults, this the ugly one you were yeah, talking about, right. Dad? Like it's not a problem for them. The man it's, with it's, one eye, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> he's as weird as you said he was, right? right. So now this is a problem for me. It's not a problem for them, right? And sometimes when you're an adult uh, and you say things just based on the fact that you're not real uh, educated on the topic, 
uh, as far as we bring up every once in a while, I'm famous for this. Uh, I called them, uh, I thought they were always colored greens. Uh-huh. So we were on the air one day, and we are talking about uh, southern food or soul food or whatever, and I, I do like, in my mind, colored greens, because I like the vinegar base, you know what I mean? That's so what we're calling it soul food. I love, like, them, I love yeah, them. I like colored oh, greens. And by the way, this is in Baltimore. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, thank God there's no one to offend there. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, and they were like, wait, what'd you say? <laughs> but I had no like, idea. Colored greens. Right. Like, no. Are you saying colored? Yeah, they're colored greens. Like, oh my God. This, this oh, they're, a potential. they're colored? Colored, What man. does that mean? I don't know, but not colored. <laughs> I just figured it meant colored greens because it was soul food. I didn't know. <laughs> we knew you meant that. Yeah. I and mean, that's right. like, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> Let's help them solve this. Yes, exactly. Wow, let's just call them greens. <laughs> I'm like, is this the West Virginia part? <laughs> yeah, I think it must be. <laughs> <laughs> we go to uh, Canada for a couple stories, and, uh, and both of these involve uh, locations, restaurants, and other places. We first start with an Alberta-based brewery. Hey, by the way, real quick. Uh-huh. Collard greens. The name collard, it comes from the word cobalt, which essentially it's a wild cabbage plant. They may be blah, blah, blah. Oh, there you go. it's Greek. That okay. has nothing to do and with it's Greek. How come I can't get, There's how, no connection for you. How come I can't get a collard green then at, at a Euro place if it's Greek? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> they don't... <laughs> Man, just please call it greens. <laughs> All right, okay. I don't know why, but now I'm getting Collard. nervous. And I'm like, I was there the first time. I know. Yeah. All right. Don't smile at me. Go, what? Yeah. I look, man, it's, it's, my, it's my bad. I, I, I realized I was the one who did it. I mean, I, I, I honestly did not know. No, we I, know you didn't I know. I honestly thought that <laughs> that's that was why what I'm it's so, called. <laughs> it made it a little better. Like, he's not being offensive. He that's, doesn't know. That one doesn't bother me as much as tossing the salad. That, that was terribly awkward. Yeah. Because, and again... I didn't, re- I didn't realize it was awkward. This is a West Virginia thing. That's got to be the only state so, where it means... Let, let, me give you, uh, let, let me give you a little bit of a uh, backstory on this. And especially uh, today. It involves one of my buddies. And we would each have maybe just a little bit of weed left. Sure. But not really a lot. You know, but we'd all have, like, I got a little corner bag. You got a little corner bag. And that was the code. He's like, why don't you come on over, man? We'll toss the salad. It's like, all right. <laughs> See, that's not. So, but this is like, you know, late 80s. I, mean, like, but again, I had no idea of the cultural meaning behind yeah, but, that term. But I did everyone not know else on earth I did uses not. that. So well, we're, we're you know, sitting at work and it's very quiet in the studio. Right? We're not on air yet. We're prepping mm-hmm. for the show. And Miles mentions to me, he says, hey, man, <laughs> after work today, you want to toss the salad? <laughs> so I was very cool and just yeah. said, no. No, don't. Why the hell not? That's just not something I want to do with you. Why? I don't get it. Let's go over to my house real quick, man. <laughs> then we'll go out to a bar or something. <laughs> You're trying, like, yeah. It was like, <laughs> no, I'm not going to toss salads with you. Well, man. we've done it many times. What the hell's your problem? What the f- are you talking about? Yeah, right, exactly. Then I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> then there's the awkward pause. What do you mean? Then Miles says, nobody wants to say anything. So Miles goes, well... What do you mean? I'm like, well, what do you think I mean? He's like, what do you think I mean? So when we finally exchange this information, he's like, oh, God, no. Jesus. You just said you have a Jesus. little bit of weed left. Jesus. I'm saying, you want to combine a you weed? You thought that I wanted to put my tongue there? Yeah. Oh, like, my God. You kept saying it. Yeah. And wouldn't let it go. I had no idea. Why not, man? Mm-hmm. It's just not words something I want to do, player. They're like, words, you know. Let's not make this any more sure, awkward sure. than it needs to be. <laughs> Give me one damn good reason. Uh-huh. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. <laughs> Come on, man. I love it. We'll yeah. just do it real quick and go to the bar. <laughs> right. I mean, everything about this. We'll start drinking. I was like, he's so casual about and this, which is we'll cool. start drinking. <laughs> like, I, you know, you be honest with you. Why don't you talk to Dave? Right. We have to drink first. Yeah, I'm going to need a couple drinks just to loosen up, brother. Yeah. <laughs> you were the only person I know. <laughs> I own it. I know. It was just a very weird, tense moment Look, that didn't need to happen. Sure, sure, sure. Let's do it real quick. Do a good drinking, man. We can do it in the car on the way. Yeah. Yeah, we can do it in the parking garage. Wherever. I don't care. I'm game. <laughs> Let's head north to Canada. <laughs> An Alberta-based brewery will be re- rebranding one of its beers after learning its names. Uh, the name means pubic hair in Maori. <laughs> uh, the brewery, <laughs> they say, should know. stop using the word in its products. What's the first thing most uh, Maori think when they hear the word huro huro? Uh, when the Maori look at the name on the store, they're not going to see feather or soft feather. They're going to see pubes. <laughs> <laughs> don't call a pubic hair unless you are selling pubic hair, and don't call beer pubic hair unless you make it with pubic hair. 
Uh, some people call it appreciation. I call it appropriation. So they sent a message on Facebook asking the company if they knew what that meant. They responded uh, stating that it meant feather when they looked it up in the dictionary. So that's what they thought it meant. But uh, turns out it means uh, pubic hair. The company is now taking the time to rename the beer. Now, there's an instance where somebody did not know what they were doing. <laughs> we head to Montreal, Canada, where this guy knows exactly what he's doing. His restaurant serves pho, and it is the King Bon restaurant. Right. All right. Claiming to be an uh, homage to Vietnamese culture. The pho? Yeah, but yes, exactly. Is in the Howard Stern reference on right, the commercial. Right. Okay. But uses vulgar and degrading puns in its name and menu. Uh, the place, which recently opened, wanted customers to mispronounce names of traditional Vietnamese food, resulting in crass and sexually explicit wordplay. Uh, prior to the backlash, they were a Vietnamese bistro. Uh, now they are a, quote, fusion bistro. And after 6,000 people uh, agreed the scheme was in bad taste, they signed a petition demanding the restaurant rename the controversial items. Okay? So but the, it's funny. The pho, um King Bon <laughs> restaurant, right. uh, they serve a classic dish. I will not give you the name because then we will be, we will be cussing, but it is slang for a good little pea. Another item uh, misspelled uh, is a French phrase known as lick my butt, but it's not my butt. (laughs) The restaurant also offers items with the name pho, like Q, Kmi, Kit, and Cough, which can easily be heard as swear words in English. Uh, The uh, King Bon restaurant claims to be an homage to Vietnamese culture. Either way, they have formally apologized to the local Vietnamese community. Uh, for the play on words, and the uh, owner does not appear to be Vietnamese. As part of the <laughs> oh, problem. No. So uh, okay, yes, exactly. that goes a long way. <laughs> so our question today: intentional or not, who said the wrong thing at the wrong time? Two zero six four two one rock. Hello, Sean. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, hola. How are you guys doing today? Doing great, man. Positive, Positive Friday. Friday. So my story is is uh, I hadn't seen a friend for quite a while. And uh, she had gained some weight. And uh, next time I saw her, I congratulated her on her upcoming baby, and she was pregnant. Yeah, yeah. man. I, I, listen, all of us, all of us, just kind of have like that sour look on her face because it's a rookie move. But we've all done it. Like all of us have learned to not do that because we've all done that. And then how bad you feel, how upset they are, seems to have a collateral effect. Mm-hmm. Now eight but, of oh, her yeah. friends are angry at you, and it's like, man, I. I but but the problem is, there's like five, six weeks of thinking it and, and wanting to find out, and and you know, like just so you could go, like, I knew it, I was right, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. That's all basically right. It. But you could also make this look. I say you don't say anything about a baby from the moment that you learn about the baby until said birth of the baby. There's all kinds. What are you saying of, if you're part of the pregnant couple, if you know somebody who's pregnant, you know what I mean. It's just it's a very delicate time. I think if you're part of the pregnant couple, you could talk about the baby. Well, sure, but yeah. I'm with Miles. Like you don't want to say, say no. You tell me you're pregnant. I go congratulations, and then hopefully I'll see the baby. But right. also, if someone says, "Hey, I'm pregnant," don't follow it up with a statement like, "Oh, I thought so." Just, "Hey, I didn't know." How many months? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. only been three. Only three. I mean, congrats. Congratulations. I will say, I've had it on the other way, too, where somebody was like, it was like the eighth month, and I was like, you're pregnant? And they were like, yeah, I've been pregnant. Like, I'm due, like, in a couple of weeks. Like, you got to be kidding me. But see, I don't think any woman's going to be upset that you couldn't tell that she was pregnant. Yeah, that's a good point. You can either not be pregnant and people think you are, or you can be eight months and no one noticed. I'm going to go ahead and say that eight months is a little happier about how things turn mm-hmm. out. Yep. Yeah, I mean, unless it's a compliment, like, I don't know. Sometimes it's women. It's just best to... I don't say anything. I will not say anything. I mean, and look, and whatever you ask me, I'm going to lie and say it looks great. Look, right? there's, a, there's, a bunch of, there's a bunch of things that, are, that inherently you need to lie about in relationships. And, and one of them is the other person's hair. And, and how many shots you've had. And, and how many shots you've had is another one. <laughs> these are the two strong. But look, man. <laughs> I promise yeah. you, these two if, things go along. How many shots you, did you have? Only two, but your hair looks like crap. <laughs> I mean, and you can, and you can stack. You can stack. Eight shots, you look like your mother. That's is that what you want to hear? And you can, so that's why it's two shots and your hair you looks can, fine. You can stag that. I mean, when they come in with a new cut, what do you think? It's like you're, You look a lot like your mom now. You know, like you can really. I mean, but the are, problem is, because your hair you looks do, like your mom. If you look 
look like your mom, but we time. can't tell you that you right. look like your mom. And it's this weird thing is then your buddies say like, dude, your wife looks like your mother-in-law. Like, I know, but I can't tell her that. Did, did they take off too much? What's the answer? Did they take off too much hair? Always. 100? No. 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 Mike, you're getting married. No. you got to be fast. Look, 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 look at how the don't, question you, was phrased. You, you paused. Not, do you like my hair short? Let if me that's the question, yes. Did they take off too much? Yes. Did they leave too much? No. Yeah. Okay, you ready, Mike? I'm ready, I'm ready. I, I don't know. Did they take off too much? Oh, not at all. It looks, it looks great. okay. It, it looks great. I still have length? Yeah. Okay. All right. See, that's very good. Even if they took off, even if they took off too much. You got to learn to... Dude, these pants make my butt look big, but Mike, the, her butt looks huge. No, not at all. No. Oh, your butt looks great. Do you like Don't, this one or this one? Your pockets look like they're under pressure. Here, here's, here's my trick on this one or this one. I'm scared to stand in front of that button. To do is you take a picture of her. <laughs> oh, oh, damn. I'm not saying you look big, but <laughs> get you to turn sideways. <laughs> and don't aim at the glass. Oh, you look great. <laughs> Thing is, you just grab whichever one that you want to and say, you look happier with that one, Miles. All right. Oh. Okay. Boom. You know what? This color really works better on you. See, mm-hmm. as a guy, we don't have that problem. We get the, is that what you're wearing? Like, there is zero question. Dude, I got walking You to need a, to get your hair cut. wearing that shirt. You need to go out your You need to shave. You need to change your shoes. You look like crap. Your breath is stupid. Like, look, we have no doubt about where we mm-hmm. stand in any given moment doing anything. I got walked into a trap because I wasn't smart enough. And she was like, I got two dresses. I'm returning them both because I don't like them. They're ugly. She put it on. I go, yeah, it is ugly. She started crying. I was like, wait a minute. I thought we were in agreement. That dress sucks. She always looks good. Though. Always. <laughs> Intentional or not, who said the wrong thing at the wrong time? 206-421-ROCK. I need a change. You've been cold to me too many times. You're wasting money. You're a leaker. So I'm replacing you with a new Navian tankless water heater. No more cold shoulders. No more leaks. Just spa-like comfort and Navian peace of mind. And oh... I want you out today. When you're ready for a change, ask your plumber about Navian or visit tanklessmadesimple.com. So I just left the house to go pick up my kids. And 10 minutes later, I got a motion alert from Ring. My alarm was going off. I opened up my app and there's this guy running out the front door. I didn't know who he was. Before I could do anything, I got a call from Ring. This is Jordan with Ring Alarm Monitoring. I'll send the police right over. My name's Nadine, and Ring helped save my house from a break-in. Protect your home today with Ring Alarm. Go to ring.com forward slash safety. That's ring.com forward slash safety. The men's room is in progress. 99.9 KISW and KISW HD1 Seattle. Strangely, this is a uh, great time if you have multiple face masks. You know? This is a yeah, good time yeah, for a face yeah. mask. Brand new uh, KISW face mask design is up now. KISW.com. This one is camel. So it looks like half your face has been blown off with a shotgun. I can't even see it. Perfect. <laughs> what happened to half your face? Oh, it's just the mask. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm going hunting. Check out that brand new KISW face mask. Both designs are up there at uh, KISW.com. And don't forget, each uh, mask, a portion of the proceeds go to the Washington State Nurse Association. So you are doing some good there as well. KISW.com. All right. Uh, the question, intentional or not? Not who said the wrong thing at the wrong time. 206-421-ROCK. Hello, Jay. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. How's all your uh, erectile dysfunctions doing? Oh, it's good. You know what? So far, so good. I don't need it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So here's my uh, here's my story. So this is about 25 years ago. I'm getting a different position with my employer and I have to train somebody new for my old position. And uh, the person I was training, uh, it was a it was an office job where it was proofreading stre- uh, spreadsheets. And um, so I'm training uh, this person, and they're doing a good job. And uh, they happened to catch a mistake on one of the spreadsheets as we were kind of going over it together. And and uh, and so I wanted to pay a compliment, and uh, and and so I said good eye, not uh, not remembering that this person had a glass eye. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> Was it awkward after that, or did you guys just kind of keep moving forward? <laughs> uh- there was a there was a brief crickets moment there. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I guess well after, you... my, after uh, the guy I work with, a uh, coworker left his glass eye on the uh, on the radio console and then yeah. called me on the hotline on his way back. Hey, since that point, we were working together. I'm like, All right, Mark, I'll keep an eye out for that. Right. <laughs> it's like, Okay. All right. That's, that's enough. That's enough jokes. <laughs> you know what? It makes it worse if you sound like that. Oh, yeah, exactly. That's like enough a, jokes. Hey, man, uh, make sure that you uh, get that spot in there. and then I'll keep an eye out for that, Mark. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> no problem. Cut it up, Mark. Yeah. Eye jokes. <laughs> Intentional or not, who said the wrong thing at the wrong time? 206 421 Rock. What's in the Wayne's world? I'm going to cross the T's and dot the. Lowercase J's. <laughs> Got those after bites. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mike. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. Okay, so long, long ago, there used to be a warehouse club called Price Club. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, they actually had a private label, and it was called Summit. Uh, and, uh, they're, so that all their, you know, uh, toilet paper, paper towels, detergents and all that, uh, was all the summit brand. If it wasn't the, the name brand or the leading name brand. So, uh, I, I worked for him at the time and we were going on a big warehouse walk with all the uh, executives and, uh, Saul Price was the, was the CEO at the time and we were all walking through the store and he was explaining how things work and everything and uh, he ended up walking up to the bulk wall where all the toilet paper was and he says uh, hey I, I, I want to ask the group here um, does anybody know why we call this summit and I thought well you know why not break the ice a little bit tell a joke and I said yeah I, I said I know and he says okay tell me why it's called summit I said because when you wipe your butt, something gets on your finger. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, you would think that that would get a funny response, you know, correct? It did for us. Yeah, and, and it was kind of like you could hear a pin drop in cotton. Oh, no. And, and I went, oh, crap. I thought, okay, well, maybe I'll follow it up. And I said, yeah, I heard you guys are coming out with a brand called Most It next month. <laughs> and I still got no Nothing crickets, man. And then my boss, when I got back to the office, he's like, "Man, that didn't go over." <laughs> did you keep your job? Yeah, I did actually. <laughs> I thought he was going to say something like, "That was the name of my dead son who passed away when he was three years old." Right. Summit. Because <laughs> <laughs> Summit gets on your finger. I did not laugh at that. I know. I know. I know. I thought it was amazing. I thought it was a great joke. Great timing. Pulled it off at the right time, but no, man, it, it did not go over. <laughs> you didn't get one giggle from a coworker. Uh, I think internally, I could hear a couple, you know, that you know, where you want to let it out, right? But, yeah. but you thought, you know, maybe I shouldn't, you know, and, and that's kind of the way it went down. Okay, those don't exist anymore, do they? Price clubs? Uh, what's that? Price, Price clubs? Club. No, they merged with Costco. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I remember them at the time. It was BJ's Warehouse, Sam's Club, or a handful of them. I was disappointed by BJ's Warehouse first time I went. <laughs> oh, no. This is just a <laughs> big warehouse TV? store. Is that why I'm here? I, I mean, it sounds hell? so funny, but remember in Ocean City, Maryland, there's, there's just BJ's on the water. I know. And I mean. <laughs> oh, no. It's a restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a good restaurant. And yeah, but I don't care. You're used to hearing the name when you live there. But like anything, when you move away and go back, you're like. That's a terrible name. Oh, my God. Because <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I want to go. This is the way a conversation could go in Ocean City based on the bars. I'll meet you at Big Packers, and we'll go down to the Brass Ball Saloon and then go up to uh, BJ's on the water. <laughs> right. And when you go to the Brass Ball Saloon, you got to get the biscuits at breakfast because they're legendary. <laughs> like, <laughs> all the names are just It's, like, it's oh a my. whole routine. They're just trying to sell cheesy t-shirt. But if you're in the Purple Moose on Division Street, you have made a mistake. <laughs> Would you go to the bearded, uh, the bearded turkey? The, well, there's, yeah. The, there's, yeah. There's the bearded clam on second. I know. The ocean city. Everything there is a double entendre. I that know. entire city is built on a double entendre. But every kid that lives there, their parents are like, I'm buying them that shirt. Mm-hmm. You're <laughs> right. Cool. When I was a kid, I, I <laughs> you could wear a bearded clam T-shirt and be in elementary school. And the teacher's like, oh, I've been there. I mean, that's why I always joke about the FBI shirts, but we bought those on the boardwalk. Federal booty inspector? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's how you get <laughs> that's that shit. Hey, <laughs> that's more believable <laughs> than lifeguard. And my cousin Tom is, like, rail thin. I'm, like, the giant fat kid. <laughs> We're walking around in federal booty <laughs> inspector <laughs> shirts. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> you work for the feds? Right. <laughs> Intentional or not, who's in the wrong thing at the wrong time? 206-421-ROUND. <laughs> I do love that place. But it's so trashy. Yeah. Hello, Eric. Welcome to the men's room. 
Hola. Hola. So, my story is when I, I was 19, I ended up getting a truck driving my license suspended, and I went into court for it, and they they have all the people who are in jail go before everyone who's supposed to go that day. Well, the last guy in line, he's in there, and he's had his license suspended for like 22 years, and he's telling the judge how he's going to drive no matter what, and I'm just thinking, oh, God, please don't. don't. Hello. 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 My last name starts with a B, so this one called up after this guy, and the judge is like, oh, driving my license suspended. He's like, I'm going to make... Uh, what? Uh, you get an example out of you and hit me with like the the maximum. I got like a five thousand dollar fine for my first first time ever having a drive drive my license suspended because of what someone else said. Yeah, because the guy who was in jail pit, pissed the judge off. <laughs> yeah, that's not good timing. It's not good. There's certain people you don't want to be behind. And certainly the guy that's going to piss off a judge because you're 100% correct comes down on you. And the person who buys something with cash in the store and pays with either a $2 bill or a 50 cent piece or a Susan B. Anthony because as a guarantee that is your change. Mm -hmm. yep. Those are just two people you do not want to be behind. Intentional or not, who said the wrong thing at the wrong time? 206 421 Rock. I think I'm spending my $2 bills like. It's it's lean times. It is lean times, but I I don't want your two dollar bill as my change because I'm not going to spend. But it's it's a guarantee that like ooh two ninety seven for change. Here's your two dollar bill, a fifty cent piece, and then normal money for the additional forty seven cents. When I was about nineteen years old, they had campus security, but they were police officers. I I you know me were they security or police officers? They were university police officers, so they had their okay. own department right. within All the right. university. To me though, they're they're Paul Blart, right? Right. <laughs> so at nineteen years old, my buddy was a two fiver, which was like yeah. campus security. Right. Well, they, these guys carried guns and stuff. So yeah, like, they didn't give Rich a gun. Yeah. yeah. So they so got to walk this one, this one night. I'm, I think I was walking down the street with a beer. <laughs> <in my laughs> walking to <laughs> help. <laughs> and this guy and this cop comes up to me, man. He's like, man, what are you doing? I'm like. I'm walking home. He's like, you can't walk down the street with a beer. And I'm like, all right, I'll finish it. So I start chugging it on the sidewalk just to get rid of it. And he's like, let me see your ID. I'm like, you can't ask for my ID. You're not a goddamn cop. You know, like I go oh. off on this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> and the next thing I know, next thing I know, I'm being body slammed into the pavement. <laughs> and I've got handcuffs on and I'm laughing at him. I'm like, you can't arrest me. You're not a real cop. I'm going to turn around and kick your ass. And then all of a sudden I hear him pull out his gun. And he sticks it in my back. And I'm like, oh, God, come on, brother. You're not going to arrest me, are you? Like, you don't even have that power. So he stands my ass up, man, and he jacks me in the face, <laughs> throws me in the back of his car. He leaves me in there for about 10 minutes, and he throws me out, and he leaves. <laughs> so basically, he just beat your ass. He just beat my ass and threw me out of the side. But he lot. didn't arrest you. No, he didn't. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he couldn't. You know what I mean? Like, I'm still, I, I still debate that. No, he could. <laughs> All right. See, I don't know. That's why I'm asking, because there is, like, security guards on campuses, like my buddy was, who who couldn't arrest you. He was like, you can't arrest me. You're not a real cop. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't even remember how quickly I hit the face of the ground and pavement. I was just like, wow. I started laughing because I was in shock. You know what I mean? I was like, ha, 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 you can't do that. And all of a sudden, I hear him, like, take the gun and put it in the middle of my back. And I'm like, oh, God, dude, seriously. <laughs> It's like I'm drinking in Milwaukee's best light. I'm walking home. It's 2 a.m. I'm not bothering anybody. Like, what the hell's your problem? You. That he stood me up and jacked me about three times and threw me back at the car face first. So the way my hands were, like, I'm down on the floor. And I remember I couldn't get out. Like, I was stuck right. between the seat and that partition wall. Yeah. So, like, like, my hands are back here. It's really hard because he slammed the door and threw my feet in. So I'm kind of in there. You're stuck. You're like, you're stuck in there. <laughs> yeah, that's why they put your hand, the hands are behind your back. So then he grabbed my ass and threw me back on the sidewalk about five minutes later, uncuffs me, kicks me, gets in the car, and drives me. <laughs> he off. just couldn't stop hitting he me. Just, he was just like, I'm going to jack this ass. <laughs> Good times. <laughs> Intentional or not, who said the wrong thing at the wrong time? 206 421 Rock. Hello, Bob. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, guys. Hola. Hola. This is way back when I was about 18 years old and. Spent months trying to grow a mustache. Well, me and my buddy are hanging out with a married couple. My friend looks at me and goes, hey, Bob, what's that on your lip? I said, this is my mustache. He says, God damn, Debbie has more hair on her face than you do. <laughs> the temperature dropped about 30 degrees. She didn't talk to him for over three hours. Wow. <laughs> All right, let me ask you this. I was going to say, somebody's got to ask the question. Did she have a mustache? Did she? 
Yeah, she had a bit of hair on her face. <laughs> okay. yeah. right. That's why, that's why so she got mad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you still don't point it out. <laughs> that's what I, if she had no hair, she'd have giggled like, ha, ha, ha. If she has a mustache, she's mm -hmm. mad. No. She's mad. How many relatives of yours have a mustache that are female? In my, fa in my family, relatives? man, I'm saying 50%. Well, come here and give your aunt some sugar. I'm like a stepfather's side. Stepfather's side is Italian, so so a lot of mustaches. I mean, a lot of yeah, a lot of hair. A lot of none neck, of my, beards, none of my and aunts too, but they're all married in. None of them are blood. Ah, right, because there was like my dad's. There's four boys. Ah, okay. Yeah, I got some hairy women, man. Just saying. Sideburns are coming in nicely. It's always the one that's like three inches long coming out of your neck. You're like, ah, uh, you can't miss that. You cannot tell me that yeah. you stood in the mirror and missed that. It because looks, it's been there for it, 12 years. It's three times as thick as any other hair you got. <laughs> right. How did it get so thick and, and curly? Come on. Intentional or not, who said the wrong thing at the wrong time? 206-421-ROCK. <laughs> Man, my aunt sings in the church choir, and I'm telling you, she'll send like pictures or videos or whatever when they when they do their services. And I, and, and I just look, and I'm like... I've never seen so many mustachioed women in one place. I mean, they sing like angels. It's they, the Old West. They do. I mean, it's like, oh, my God. It's like a specialized brothel. Like, what is this? Well, I was going to say, too, and this sounds bad, but I trust that their choir is good. If a woman has a mustache and she's singing, I'm telling you, she can sing like that. And I'm eating whatever she's cooking. I, how, how many wigs? Things. What's the percentage of wig wear? Wigs? Yeah. 85% yeah, percent, yeah, man. That's a good choir. It, yeah, and that's the church wig. Yeah, my grandma had a bunch of wigs. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. there's what I, well, this is my grocery store yep. wig. This is someone's coming over wig. This is date night wig. This is someone someone's coming over, but I've never met them wig. My special friend wig. Spe spe special, special friend, friend wig. wig. Why is that one a little longer than Why, What is that? What do you mean, grandma? Special friend. <laughs> right. Why does that one look so much different? Pigtails? Huh. <laughs> Intentional or not, who said the wrong thing at the wrong time? 206 421 Rock. <laughs> Hello, Mark. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. So, uh, the most inappropriate, it, it was you guys. You guys came and uh, spoke at a Green River College banquet <laughs> for, the radio, for the radio program. I don't remember any of this. Go ahead. Continue. I remember that because you had a cat that looked like you know, Howard Stern. I didn't Stern. remember it until somebody made a comment about, oh, it's your dead son's name. Well, we have uh, a scholarship, and it's called the Matthew Chase Scholarship. This was about three, maybe about five years ago. I don't know, man. It was a while back. About two concussions ago. Okay. And um, you guys made a joke, and it was clearly you didn't know the outcome of that story, but you're like, he must have been great, and you made some jokes not realizing that he had got killed in a car wreck. Oh, going from, Steve. Going from, <laughs> from, Steve. Going from KISW to the college. Um, I believe he interned on the Bob Rivers show at the time. And he died in a... So, and I don't remember this, so at the end of this, <laughs> did, anybody, did anyone clear it up with us or were we just yucking it up? Were they mad at Steve? <laughs> <laughs> um, we excused you. Um, I looked like Howard Stern at the time. I don't know if you remember. If you remember that, yes, yes. yeah. You look exact. I don't we know. We were you do now, We were but. wondering why we weren't invited back. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. But in, like, and I, I, if you talk a lot, you're going to say something stupid eventually. Yeah. And I thought it was in hindsight. I thought it was kind of, you know, cheek and tongue in cheek. It was funny because you didn't know. But just the horror of everybody else knowing that <laughs> what it was. And I was looking at the expression on people's faces because, you know, we say dumb things. <laughs> well, I did not know that until now. Damn, Steve. Now I feel awful. <laughs> Jesus. Well, so the rule of thumb is if there's a scholarship named after somebody, yeah. you're dead. You're right. A, <laughs> a building a scholarship, just don't crack it. Now, good let advice. me ask you this, man. Good, good advice. I do remember your ass because you looked precisely like Howard Stern. I'm not making this up. You do look like Howard Stern was sitting here listening to us, right? And I do it's remember. you. I remember. At, right, it's the Jew for right? Now, I remember at the end of this. I asked you why you wanted to do radio, and at that time you told me it was specific because you wanted to bring new music to new people, but also to bring the music that that you don't normally hear on the radio. It was roughly that was your stance. What are you doing now? This is true. Um, I do. I, well, I used to go and travel the world around and go see music festivals. I did college radio for quite a few years, and then I got in trouble for saying dumb things on the radio and got. Asked not to come back. You're kidding me. Um, 
<laughs> and we made you uncomfortable. Right. All right, well. <laughs> yeah, well, you didn't make me uncomfortable. I was just like, wow, they don't know. Yeah. Let's see what happens next. Right. We wonder why um, we, don't, we don't get invited like, to a lot of places. We really don't. <laughs> Actually, and, and they, man, good luck on, on what you do. I do remember that guy. Yeah. Uh, Castle had me, this a couple years ago in Vegas, said, hey, man, do you want to do this panel with me? So, like any convention, uh, you know, people in the business go up on stage. They talk to everyone else in the business about whatever. And in this case, the panel was about interviewing. All right. So, I go, now, Alter Bridge was there. We were going to talk to this group of radio professionals about interviewing. Alter Bridge was already on stage with us. And then we'd follow that up with an interview with Alter Bridge. And we're pretty familiar with Alter Bridge. They knew us, blah, blah, blah. So, we go up there. Castle says a few words at the top. Turns it over to me. Now, I said some of the basic things, like, look, if you're going to interview someone and people are on, if you're talking A-list or something like this, if people are already excited, please do not ask the stupid questions they already know the answer to. Don't bother to ask them about their latest album, because they're not going to tell you it's the fourth best ever. Miles, you prefer to play right. a Nobody cares. Paul Reed Smith. Doesn't mean a goddamn thing. Humanize them, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going on and on and on about what should be some base-level routine crap about doing an interview, but at the end of it, because I'm feeling good about myself, so I wrapped it up with these words. And if your program director has a problem with it, you can tell him to suck your D. <laughs> <laughs> so, now, <laughs> that is where I was in my mind. And right after I said it, I thought, did I say too much? All right, so we finish this panel. We take a quick break. I go outside to smoke a cigarette, and this chick walks out, walks straight up to me and says, that is the best panel I said. You're the only person to move me with your words. I'm the only person up there that means exactly what they say. Mm -hmm. Man, gave me a hug. She's now working in radio. Yeah. I went over to Castle. Did I say too much? And I love what Castle said. He looked at me, and he goes, thrill? The reason I asked thrill on stage, because I wanted thrill to be thrill. said, if I wanted Steve on stage, I would have asked for Steve. Mm -hmm. said, I asked for thrill. You gave me thrill. I know you meant it. Water under the bridge. Hey, we still haven't been asked back. But I have not been asked back. <laughs> Intentional or not, <laughs> who said the wrong thing at the wrong time? 206-421-ROCK. The motto for world-class competition has always been faster, higher, stronger. It's the same for Navian, makers of condensing tankless water heaters. Faster to install and set up. Higher performance and efficiency to provide endless hot water. Stronger with the industry's strongest warranty. All because of the copper-free stainless steel heat exchanger built in every unit. Learn about Navian's condensing Condensing tankless water heaters and find a Navian contractor at TanklessMadeSimple.com. That's TanklessMadeSimple.com. Count on the weekend.